Hi class, welcome to presentation four. Glad to have you here. Uh, today I chose the Hal Burton case uh, an accounting whistleblower case. Um, it's about Tony Menendez, the chief uh, financial executive and director of uh, technical accounting research and training at Hal Burton. While working at Hal Burton, uh, Tony became aware of bill and hold accounting fraud. Uh, bill and hold accounting fraud, uh, the story relates it to a guitar scenario where you purchase a guitar and then the company charges your credit card and they send you a receipt, a receipt for that guitar, but say that they'll ship you that guitar in six months. Um, but then they record the revenue recognition uh, at that current in that current period. Um, this speeds up revenue recognition and boosts earnings for the financial statements. And all of this can even happen before the materials are even acquired to make the guitars. So Tony Menendez became aware of this situation at Hal Burton and uh, decided to turn to his own principles. Uh, so what are Tony Menendez's principles? Um, first, he had to look at honesty, as he knew this was poor accounting practices. Uh, fairness, as it related to the investors uh, investing in Halliburton. Objectivity, viewing the overall effect of the whole situation. And then the last, his responsibility, knowing he ultimately had to report uh, the accounting fraud. Uh, next, Tony looked at his standards. Uh, the IMA standards are competence, confidentiality, integrity, and credibility. Tony knew he had a duty to report uh, uh, what he had found to remain in line with those IMA standards. Um, so how did Tony end up deciding to dic disclose this? Uh, first, he turned to his supervisor. Uh, he discussed the situation uh, with his supervisor, but his supervisor told him that um, while... Although Tony was correct in his uh, conclusion about the accounting fraud, they couldn't do anything because it would be costly. Uh, so what should Tony have done next? Next, he should have uh, went to the next level of management as his supervisor uh, wasn't very helpful in this situation. Uh, if Tony didn't have anyone to go to, uh, another uh, thing he could have turned to was the IMA hotline. Uh, which uh, is there to discuss eth ethical dilemmas and provide you guidance on what you should do next. Next, Tony should have gotten legal advice. Uh, he did eventually get legal advice uh, and assistance, but that was after the investigation was already um, uh, acquired into um, Halliburton. And then the last resort, uh, Tony should disassociate himself from the company which he ended up doing after his boss had sent a letter to the entire company telling, telling them that Tony had whistle blew on the company, which didn't look great for Tony and created more of a hostile work environment for him. Uh, so in conclusion, what should a Tony Men Menendez do? Um, I believe Tony Menendez, Menendez did actually do the right thing in whistleblowing uh, the accounting fraud to the SEC. Um, he knew he had a moral and ethical duty to do that. Um, he knew the accounting practices were wrong and that, uh, and he had the moral courage to whistleblow the operation, even knowing that his job might be at risk and the company might be at risk for investigation. So I think Tony was a fine example of uh, sticking to the IMA standards of ethical professional practices. Uh, thanks for tuning into my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.